We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory, of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O Giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Our reading this evening is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our hymn. King 
grace and peace be under from God, our Father, and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our focus for the next few weeks is going to be a new series titled Rejoice. Can we really do that? As we look at all of the circumstances surrounding our world today with pandemic, with rioting, with all the negativity going on in politics, that's a question we often ask. Can we rejoice? And then we look at Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi, and he tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. It's a phrase of frustration and hurts. It's a phrase uttered in times of trouble. It's a phrase said to someone whose situation is opposite of ours. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It's easy for us to say that when everything is going good. It's another thing to say it when things are going rough. And as we hear these verses tonight, we might be tempted to say, well, that's easy for you to say because you aren't in my situation. How can I rejoice? As we look at that letter Paul wrote, it's easy for him. To say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. So we're going to look at Paul's own life as he writes this verse to the Christians in Philippi. And as he pins this, it's important for us to understand, Paul is in prison. Things are not going so great. He's dealing with the stresses and the struggles of prison. And on top of dealing with those pressures and worries, he is also worried about the churches that he started, like the ones in Corinth, Thessalonica, Ephesus. This isn't including any problems he's dealing with in Philippi. And in chapter 3, he expresses worry over false teaching in their midst. And then we go on to chapter 4, where he is dealing with a feud between Euodia and Syntechidae. And on top of it all, he's working in a context in a place that's hostile to Christians. The point being, Paul is not writing when everything is good. Paul is not writing when everything is perfect. He isn't writing after he's had a very beautiful mountaintop experience. He isn't writing at this time after Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus. But his life is full of challenges. And through it all, he is saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. Now, Paul's call to joy is helpful. And it brings up two important questions for us Christians. Where do we ultimately find our joy? And what affects our joy? Now, we can find joy in our hobbies. We can find it in reading, maybe gardening. We can have joy in following our favorite sports team as long as they're winning. We might find special joy in a person, be it our spouse, our child, our grandchild, a friend, or a relative. It's in these things that people go to in times of trouble. It's then they go to find the ultimate fulfillment in life. Honestly speaking, it seems that we don't have joy in the Lord like we do in these other things. But what Paul says is for it, us, it's easy to rejoice, especially with a God like we have. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Did you catch that little preposition? It's a key to Paul's main point. He says, rejoice in the Lord. Our Lord is the one in whom we find joy in. He can always have that joy for us. And we can have the joy in the one who has died for us, who has forgiven us, despite us putting everything before Him. We can have joy in Him who loves us, who cares for us, who guides us, who provides for us, even when we don't deserve it. 
We can have joy in our Savior who gives us a gift of life through the waters of baptism, who gives us and renews and strengthens our faith as we receive His body and blood in the Lord's Supper. We receive new life, salvation, mercy, and grace. And because of all of this, we can rejoice in our Lord. And we can truly rejoice in Him in whatever the circumstance. This joy in Christ is true joy. It's not based on our circumstances. It's not based on anything we can control in life. It may, it, it's not even based on anything we may experience. It's based on our Lord's faithful promises. And that is why Paul continues to repeat himself when he says, again, I will say rejoice. We can always have joy in Him because of His grace, because of His goodness, because He gives us joy, and it's a lasting joy. So in Christ, we always have something to rejoice about, and that is Him, Himself. And as a result of this joy, and as a result of our faith in the Lord and the gifts He's given us, we see our life changing. Paul says, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Paul is telling us that when our joy is in him, we can show our reasonableness. And that Greek word for reasonableness means more than just that. It means moderation. It means gentleness. It means selflessness. It means being a mild person. And since our joy is in the Lord, we can show these qualities to others in face of all the situations that we deal with in life, in face of sicknesses, in face of ailments, in face of financial problems. Because our joy is not rooted in the things of the world, but it's rooted in Christ. And from these things, joy flows through with faith. We can always have joy because, as Paul says, the Lord is at hand. He is near us to help us. He is near us to give us patience, wisdom, strength, and grace. And since our God is close at hand, we do not have to be anxious about anything, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God. We bring our requests, both big and small, to Him since He is our Father through faith. We don't have to be anxious because we can leave all matters to God's fatherly direction and care. Thanksgiving is ours because we go to God in prayer, because we live with Jesus. We are never without specific reasons for being able to give thanks. And Paul finishes up this with a blessing. And he says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's how we end sermons. Reminding people that the peace of God is with us. The peace of God is a condition brought about between God and His people as a consequence of our salvation. There is no dividing wall between us and Him. We're made right with Him and no longer at odds with Him. And this is a special peace. With that, we have the human mind, reason. None of these things that we can do, the peace of God does with ease. His peace keeps the heart in check. His peace watches our minds. His peace guards against human afflictions and sinful thoughts. That is peace. So rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. It can be difficult to hear. We can always, though, rejoice in God. That He is awesome. And He is ours. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.